What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to find instant help for your project with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, I'm going to show you how to find instant help for your project with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've got a ton of Kinter videos, almost 200 here in this playlist. If you've been watching for a while, we've gone over everything. But from time to time, you just forget things or you can't remember a certain thing about a certain widget or whatnot. Where can you go to get instant help? And in this video, I'm going to show you how to find in Python itself where to find all the help you could ever need for any widget with Kinter or other things as well. And it's really, really simple. So if we head back over to our terminal here, you can see I've got this thing sitting here and we're going to go through this, but you can see there's a bunch of stuff and it's all the information. If you look here, I've got the label class, right? Kinter has labels. We use labels all the time. You want to learn about labels. You can read all about them right from the terminal right when you're working on your project. You don't have to go to any website. You don't have to watch any videos. Everything you could want is right here with Python. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to tap into this for anything you want with Kinter. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this screen, head over to our Sublime Text Editor. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with like I said, almost 200 other Kinter videos and growing. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So, okay, I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. The only difference is I added this TTK line. And we've done this lots of times. Whenever we want to use the TTK widgets, we import TTK from Kinter. It's kind of weird that you have to import it because it comes standard with Python, but that's what we do. And we've got this basic code. I'm calling it help.py. And if we said save this, head back over to our terminal, type in Python help.py. We just get this very basic sort of nothing app because we haven't done anything with it. So let's pretend that's the app we're working on and we're like, oh, I got to use a label. I don't remember how to use a label. How can I find help for that? Or you don't know all the attributes of the label. How do you make it bigger? How do you make it bigger width? How do you make it bigger height? How do you change the font stuff? All of those things. Where can you get instant help? Well, we can come right back in our code and just look up the help for something. So let's create a variable. I'm just going to call it my help like that. And we're going to set this equal to a string because we want this to be readable in string format. And then we could just call the help function. This help function comes with Python. You can use it not just in Kinter, but anything in Python. If you're stuck and want to learn more, you can use this help function. And then you just pass in whatever you want help with. So we've got Kinter imported so we can look up help for all the Kinter stuff. So we could just say, hey, give me the help for label. That's it. So now we can print this out and that should be all we really need. So let's head back over here and let's run this again. Python help.py. I'm in my C GUI directory as always. And when we do, boom, the app pops up. We don't really care, but all this help stuff pops up as well. And you can look, I'm scrolling, scrolling. There is a lot of stuff here. Now, some things have more information than others. In this case, label has a lot of stuff. So you can just start reading through this. And if you're a huge geek like me, you love this sort of stuff. You like to dive in here. You like to read all this stuff, find out all the little tricks and tips. People are always asking me, hey, how do you learn all this stuff? What website do you go to? I don't go to any website. I just read this stuff, right? I've gone through this stuff for years with anything in Python you want to learn about. Now, there may be better websites where you can go, as we'll see in a minute. But to get started, you're going to want to read through the documentation. So you can see it talks about the method resolution order, label widget, base widget, miss pack, place, grid, etc. And then you could see options. What can we do with our label? Well, these are the standard options. These work with most widgets, active background, foreground, anchor, set the background, set a bitmap, border width, cursor. We've done all this stuff. Font, we want to change the font, right? Foreground, all this stuff. These are basic widget standard options. These are widget specific options. These are just for the label widget. We can change the height. We can change the state. We can change the width, right? And then you could come through here and learn about inheritance and all this stuff and just kind of keep reading. I'm not going to go through all this. I'll let you read this if you're interested. If you're not, you're probably not watching this video anymore anyway, but read through here. I mean, there is a ton of stuff and very cool. And come down here, hack stuff. 
These are just basic widget things which get inherited by the label widget so we can use and all that good stuff. So we can come back to our app, close it, boom, this goes away. Now, this is a lot of stuff, right? And sometimes reading stuff in a terminal isn't that great. So we could really quickly just print this out to a text file and read it somewhere else if we wanted to. So we could go Python help.py and then we can output it to help.txt or something. So we run it. Here's our app. We close it. Nothing seems to have happened, but now we can head back over to Sublime and let's go file open and let's search in that same directory for help.txt. There it is. We can open it and boom, now that whole help file has been output to this help.txt file. Maybe this is easier for you to read. Maybe you want to print this out. Maybe you want to do who knows what with it. Now you've got it in a text file and it's easier to copy, easier to save, easier to read probably and all the good stuff. So very cool and uh, really, really easy. So here we've got label. You could do this for just about anything. So let me really quickly just print out for you a list of widgets. So let's say list of widgets. Now I'm not sure this is a complete list. I sort of just did this off the top of my head. So I might have forgot something. But we could see button, canvas, check button, entry, frame, label. We just did label frame, list box, menu, menu button, radio button, and scale. There may be some other widgets, but like I said, those are the main ones I could think of off the top of my head. If there are other ones you come across, you can obviously use them. So we've just taken label and we popped it in there. If we wanted to learn about entry, we could do that. Save this sucker, come back over to our terminal, run it again, boom. Now we've, we can learn about entry, right? Up on class entry in module enter, right? Very cool. So like I said, let me close this out. Boom. We can do the basic widgets with this. We can do our TTK widgets. So let me come down here and paste out another sort of thing. And the code for this video will be on GitHub. So if you want these lists, they'll be there, or you could just copy them, pause right now and copy them yourself. But these are the TTK widgets. So these are the basic ones. These are the first 12 that are the same as these, but just different for TTK. And then there's also additional ones that TTK uses that aren't in the sort of standard widgets. And those are combo box, notebooks, progress bar, separator, size, grip, and tree view. We've done all of these in the past, I think. We just did a bunch of videos on tree view. So if you want to learn about these, you can, same thing. If we want to learn about tree view, we would come up here. And instead of tree view, we would be looking for TTK dot tree view, right? So if we save this, come back over here, run this guy again, boom, huge output. And we can learn about tree view, right? So very, very cool. And uh, this is all built right into Python. This is all stuck in there. You don't have to go to a website. You don't have to download anything. These are just the help files that come with Python. So like I said, you could do this with widgets. You could do this with anything. So Let's see, in the last video, we did uh, some stuff with the color chooser, right? So maybe we want to learn about the color chooser. So let's import that. So from tkinter, we want to import our color chooser. So now we can get the help for it by just coming down here and popping it in there. Color chooser, right? We save this. And now you'll notice here, let's clear the screen and run this guy again. Got our thing, we close it, boom, it pops up. Sometimes it pops up right away. Sometimes you have to close your app in order for it to work. Sort of depends on your terminal also. But you'll notice here, not nearly as much stuff, right? It's just one little page of stuff. And if you look at this, it says, Kinter Color Chooser. Oh, here it gives you a reference. So maybe in this case, you want to copy this, head over to your web browser, pop that URL in there, and then maybe learn a little bit about it on the website itself, right? Here we have the Ask Color option, right? We did that in the last video. So maybe we want to learn about that. So uh, let's see, let's come back over here, clear this screen, come back over to our code real quick. And we can go color chooser dot ask color. I don't think there's gonna be much at all for this because this is really sort of drilling down niche. Uh, but there might be a little something. We got this, we close it, boom. Yeah, there's not a whole lot here. Like I said, some things have more information than others. It's just sort of how the guys over the years that have built up Python have, have sort of flushed out the help pages. 
sometimes there's more than others, but you know, for the most part, you get good information here. You know, there's not a whole lot you can do with the ask color option. So maybe that's why there's not a whole lot of stuff to display there. I don't know. But anyway, like I said, this works with Kinter. This works with anything Python, really. So you can always use this help function, slap it in a string. Let's pull this back and let's take off the string thing. And let's just see what this looks like. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. Let's run this guy again. Got our app, we close it. Yeah, that still works. Sometimes it's easier to read if you put it in the string function. Sometimes you don't have to. I would recommend doing it, just why not, right? Better safe than sorry. And that's all there is to it. So obviously this is not the end all be all, right? Sometimes you just need somebody to show you something. Reading the documentation is dry and confusing sometimes. Other times it's very helpful and very useful and you can pull it right up and go, oh, that's how you do this. That's how you change the width. That's how you change the height. That's how you do whatever. Those are the different options this widget has. I forgot how to spell it. Boom, there it is. Something easy like that. Also, if you really want to master this stuff, I always recommend just diving into the documentation first, read as much as you can, understand as much as you can. If you don't understand something, Google it even further from there. But the documentation is a good starting point. So that's how to find help for Kinter while you're in your project, while you're creating something along the way, you could just slap in a little help function here, print it to the terminal, read about it, and then go about your business. Uh, pretty cool and uh, really easy. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships and pages $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.